Hey, family, friends. Uh, my name is Ben, and I'm one of the pastors here at 24 Church, and I want to welcome you to our online service. And this is kind of the first week in a long time where we have both an online service and we're meeting live at the school. Uh, and so we're doing that so that however you feel comfortable, you're able to gather with the body of Christ. So some of you are with us at Pleasant View Christian School, and some of you get to tune in this way. You're going to hear the same message uh, and join kind of in the same worship gathering, but that's what's going on. And we're going to continue to do that until we're back in our building, uh, which we hope happens soon. But you can see I'm, uh, I'm in our foyer right now, and construction is still going on. Uh, and we're really excited about how this building is transforming and what a wonderful tool it's going to be uh, in the future. So that's kind of what's going on with 24 Church. Uh, if you're new around here, I want to say an extra special welcome and tell you that this is our vision. We're, we're attempting with the Holy Spirit's help to be a gospel-centered family who's on mission for the fame of Jesus and for the good of our neighbors. We, we want to be salt and light people here in the midst of Pleasant View where God has planted us. We want everybody to have a regular encounter with the real Jesus and with Jesus' people and know all about him. Uh, so that's what we're about. That's what we're striving to do here at 24 Church. Um, if you'd like to let us know, hey, I'm here and, and you don't really know me. We don't know one another. I want to encourage you to go to our website. There's a button on the front page of our website that says, let's connect. It's a red button. And I want to encourage you to click that and just give us a little bit of your information. You can leave a comment, a prayer request. You can ask a question. But that's a really easy way if you're gathering with us online for us to interface and get to know one another. And we really, truly would love to meet you. Uh, so please click on that if you're new. We're about to jump into worship. And so I want to pray for us before we do that. Let's, let's pray together. Father, we thank you uh, for what you're doing. And um, we can see, we, we gathered for the breakfast worship tour last week, and, and all our people got to see some of what's happening uh, in this building. But there's all kinds of other spiritual things that are harder to see that are going on as well. And we just thank you that you're sovereign and that you're in charge and that nothing happens that escapes your notice or that wasn't even uh, planned and known about by you thousands of years ago from the beginning of time. And so we thank you that we serve a big, mighty, wonderful God. And you're not just big and all-powerful, you're loving. And we're about to worship you. And we pray that in these next few moments as we do that, that you would help us to worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, teach us and lead us today. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
right now at 24 Church, when you give, uh, everything goes to one big pot. It goes to what we call the Worth It Initiative. And, and the tagline of the Worth It Initiative is investing in gospel, family, and mission. So it's it's our vision. It's our mission. Uh, what we're already striving to do, we want to invest in that even more. We want to double down. And so when you give to 24 Church, it goes for all our regular ministries. It goes to help make this building expansion happen. Uh, and it also goes to help start new ministries uh, that we're starting uh, as soon as, as possible. And so uh, we want to just thank you for being faithful to give to 24 Church and let you know that when you do so, that's where your money goes. And there are four ways that you can actually give uh, right now if you'd like to. You can give online and just go to 24church.com. You'll see a button that says give and you can click on that and give. You can give uh, on our app. So we have a church center app on your phone and you can give uh, through that way. You can also give via text message and you can mail in a check. And you're seeing all the information on the screen right now. Uh, but we, uh, we just want to let you know that's how you can give. And thank you so much for being faithful in giving. We're going to do our best to steward this money well and use it to glorify God. Hey, good morning, everybody. We're so glad that you can join us online for the online version of uh, our 24 worship uh, time together. Uh, we are meeting currently uh, in the Pleasant View Christian School, uh, and we are so very grateful that they're letting us meet there. One of the things that we discussed, though, was that we felt like it would be hard to uh, have a uh, online uh, feed uh, that was worthy of watching the quality and so forth. So we discussed that we would uh, continue to do what we've been doing along with uh, offering our gatherings together. So uh, obviously, if you're watching this, it's because you probably can't be with us at the school, uh, but we are glad that you are with us. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, and we love you and we miss you. And we look forward to the day that uh, you can be with us. And uh, But uh, hey, it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. So, uh, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's an awesome thing. And I, I love Father's Day. I, I hope that you do. I know that uh, for some people it can be a tough day. Uh, uh, but uh, I hope that together today, uh, our time in the Word is is uh, encouraging to you and helpful to you, uh, no matter where you fall with that. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, I just want to I just want to pray for us right now. So let's pray before we get into this and ask God to speak to us through His Word. God, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have, uh, Lord, together this way and to uh, to worship you. And God, I, I pray that right now as people watch online and as people worship together in person, uh, literally at the same time, Lord, uh, we just we just ask that you'd be glorified. We, we ask that you would be uh, praised and honored and, and all the things that we do here together. And uh, God, thank you for all the people that help make this happen. Uh, and uh, God, just uh, uh, Lord, may your word speak to our hearts. Uh, may you speak to our hearts. May you change our hearts uh, to look like yours. God, we long, Lord, to meet with you and be with you. And God, I pray that that would be even more so after spending uh, some time today in your word. Uh, God, speak to us. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. So, this morning, uh, for Father's Day, uh, you know, I got to thinking about Father's Day, and I, you'd think that, uh, you know, I would have something to say about Father's Day. I have seven children, if you didn't know that, and uh, uh, seven kids, being the father of seven kids, uh, proves to be an interesting life, and uh, my wife would say the same uh, for her to be the mother of seven kids, and uh, uh, you get a, you end up in a lot of conversations, and and. As much as, you know, somebody else might think that I've got something to say to, about Father's Day, the truth is I look to a lot of other fathers and, and a lot of them much older than me uh, to for their wisdom, for the things that they like to share. And something about having seven kids uh, gives the opportunity, whether you ask for it or not, for people to talk to you when you're out in public, people you've never met in your life come along and they want to make comments. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not the best comments. Sometimes they're great. Uh, but I'll tell you, I've had along the way, I've had I've had several, uh, you know, dads along the way come and, and, and just for brief moments in time when they see us uh, begin to talk to me about our children. Uh, and it's usually, they're usually good conversations. Uh, and, and the things that I hear them say are things like this. Uh, love them while you can. Enjoy these moments while they're little. 
And one of the things that uh, uh, one of the things that I, I really is very encouraging for us in a bigger family like we have uh, to hear is I've, ha- I've, heard, I've had a lot of them say to me, uh, "I wish that we had had more children. I've always regretted that we didn't have more," and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, and 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 so th- so things like that. And you know, and and along the way, um, you know, as as I've as I've heard these things and listened to these folks, you know, share these things, uh, I'm just reminded. Uh, I'm reminded of a lot of things. I'm reminded that uh, you know that, that dads hold a special place in their heart for their children. Uh, children hold special places in their hearts for their dads. Uh, and and I'm also reminded that for some days like Father's Day, it's not easy. Uh, you know, not everybody uh, is blessed to to have their father with them now. I had that discussion with one of my friends this week, uh, and uh, and we talked about that and and cried together a little bit even about that about him not having his dad these days and. Uh, you know, and uh, I post from a girl that I grew up with, uh, you know, who was like my sister growing up. Uh, she lost her dad the day after she got married uh, 22, 23 years ago. Uh, and, uh, and so she still talks about in every anniversary and every Father's Day, she makes a post and she always posts this picture of her dad kissing her when she was leaving for her honeymoon, the last time she saw her dad. And she always posts that picture and it always, you know, has, has a little thing and I have some of it written here, uh, you know, where, you know, she just always says, no matter your age, uh, give your dad lots of kisses, hugs and good conversation. You never know uh, when it might be that it's your last kiss, hug or talk. Um, and, and, you know, that's so true for so many people. Well, um, I, I just been praying this week about, you know, what, what do I talk about that's meaningful for us, especially in the midst of everything going on right now, just what, what's something that's encouraging for us to be reminded of about a day like Father's Day? And I just began thinking about Jesus himself. And I began thinking about how Jesus loved his dad, you know, about how he loved the Father. And we see this beautiful relationship within the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and we, see, we see Jesus always trying to glorify the Father, always pointing back to the Father, always, always ready to go with whatever plan that the Father had for him, looking to him for guidance. And, and if you were fortunate in your life to have a really good dad, uh, then, then you, you would also feel that way about your dad. I feel that way about my dad. My dad uh, gives great guidance uh, you know, on a lot of things. There's a few things that uh, I, don't, I don't take guidance from my dad on, like cars and things like that. It's okay. Uh, it's not his thing. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, we make jokes about that kind of stuff and go on. Uh, but a good dad is somebody that gives you good guidance. Jesus, Jesus prayed a lot uh, throughout his ministry. He prayed a lot. He took moments out to get away and just be with the Father. We've talked about some of those even recently at Gethsemane and different things. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I think for us to be reminded that some days we take uh, those, we take these moments that we have and we kind of squander these moments that we could also seek the Father, seek our Heavenly Father. And yes, it's Father's Day, but I, I, I just think that today is a great opportunity for us to focus for just a couple of minutes here on, on the Father and how much He loves us and how much He is there for us. Jesus set a precedent for us with, with going to the Father. Uh, and and, and that, that's something that we need today so desperately uh, is time with God, that we, we've become so busy even in a quarantine time, that we will look everywhere else for input into our life, for guidance into our life. We, we look to the news channels or we look to uh, the blogs or social media or whatever it may be to be what feeds us information. And I think oftentimes we're just missing being with the Lord or oftentimes just missing being with being with God himself. I want to share this passage with you. And this is the passage that you may be familiar with where uh, one of Jesus's friends dies. This is Lazarus. And and Lazarus dies. 
And uh, Jesus isn't there when he dies, and uh, but Jesus is aware that he's become sick and he's become ill. He gets word of that, and of course he knows what's going on because he's Jesus. And uh, and he stays where he's at to continue to minister even a couple of extra days after getting that news. And you can read all this in John 11. We're not going to read the whole thing today. Uh, but I want to read this last part of this passage uh, where we see what happens here because Jesus finally comes uh, back to meet with uh, the family and all of this, and uh, this, is, this is where we see uh, the verse, Jesus wept. Uh, we see Jesus brokenhearted after seeing his family brokenhearted, after seeing them in tears. He too joins them in tears. He loves them. He cares for them. He shows compassion for them. That's being a great friend. That's being someone who cares. And it goes on, and, and, it, and it shares with us a little bit of something that happens here in John eleven thirty eight. 38. We see this amazing thing, and, and as you may predict, you know, we see Lazarus brought back from the dead and those kinds of things, but, there's, but that's really almost not the focus here. The focus is really on Jesus himself, and even in maybe a little bit, even just in the family and their belief in Jesus, that they do believe Jesus is the Son of God. And they're already saying to Jesus, we know that he'll, he'll be alive again at the resurrection and all this kind of stuff, meaning when Jesus comes back and all that kind of stuff. I mean, just all, all of this stuff is rich, rich, full of stuff here. Uh, but in verse 38, I want to pick up where uh, it shows Jesus being deeply moved and then they're going to Lazarus, who's again dead and in his tomb. And it says this in verse 38, it says, then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an, an odor, for he has been dead four days. So four days he's been gone. And in verse 40 it says, Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. So Jesus takes this moment in the midst of this going on to pray. And I think this is an interesting passage of Scripture because this is Jesus, and we know Jesus is God. And, of course, he does, you know, he fits within the Trinity. He's the Son of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and all this. But he, too, is God, and, and he has the power to raise the dead if he wants to. He, he's already, and, and the, the crowds were already saying things like, if he could have healed that blind man, why wasn't he here to heal his friend? Here he is so deeply moved. Why wasn't he here to do something about it? Uh, well, there's all part of a plan. Jesus, Jesus stayed. Remember, Jesus stayed a couple extra days and all of this stuff. He even tells them at one point in time, before they've even gone, he tells the disciples, hey, he's already died, and I'm glad that he's already died so that I wasn't there so that you might not doubt what's going to happen, that you'll see for your own self what is going to happen. So in the middle of all this, Jesus prays, and he says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. And he says, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. So Jesus prays in this moment. And so we see, we see Jesus do something that I think is important. We see him go to the Father. But then in the midst of that, he also says to the Father, I'm doing this so that they hear listening to me will understand that I'm sent from you, right? And, and that they would believe in me. And so I'll read that part again. It says, but I said this on account that the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. So Jesus prayed this prayer, and it is to the Father, but he also prayed this prayer for the benefit of, of those that were standing right there and were there with him. In verse 43, we're going to come back to that. Verse 43, it says, when he, said, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who died, who had died, came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. And that's it. We don't have a whole lot of like afterwards, like, 
here's the party, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's really because John, that's not what John was concerned with when he was pinning this, when God was using him to pin this for us. The focus here is on Jesus himself. It's not on the fact that Lazarus was raised from the dead, but in within this story of what happens here, we see something, and we see Jesus stop and pray. Now, first of all, I mean, how much better would our lives be if in every crazy moment that we encounter within the day, every day, we stopped and we prayed. We sought the will of the Father. What, what, how would that change our lives, our days? And then furthermore, we see Jesus say and within the prayer, by the way, I'm doing this for the benefit of those standing around that they may believe that you sent me. One of the interesting things about prayer is this. Jesus talks uh, about prayer 37 times in the Gospels. He talks about prayer 37 times in the Gospels. 33 of those times, he addressed praying together. Let me, let me say that again. I, want, I really want us to get this today. 37 times in the Gospel, Jesus talks about prayer. 37 times he talks about prayer. 33 of those times, the majority of those times, he's talking about us praying together. I think that's a big deal. Um, you take Sermon on the Mount. In fact, I want to read a little clip of Sermon on the Mount to you, if I may. Matthew 7, 7, it says this. It says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. Or which one of you, if the son asks him for bread, will, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, know how much more your father, okay, your father who is in heaven, give, give good things to those who ask him. Jesus is sharing this within the Sermon on the Mount to tons of people, tons of people. This is one of the 33 times of the 37 times in which Jesus talks about prayer, where he is talking about prayer, and in this situation, he's talking about it to literally a huge crowd of people. I think for us today to be reminded of things like Matthew 18, 19, where two or more are gathered together in his name, he will meet with them, right? Those types of passages call to us to be reminded today that we are called not just to pray, but to pray together. To pray together. That, that's, a, that's a big deal for us today. So I'm going I'm to throw a question at you. No guilt involved here. I don't want that. That's not what I'm interested in. But when was the last time you prayed with some other people? You say, well, I prayed church, whatever. Okay, that's, that's, that counts. That counts. Uh, during the run of a week, when was the last time you prayed with other people? When, I'm, I'm talking about when's the last time you sought the Lord, asking Him maybe to intervene in somebody's life, to do something great for His kingdom, thanking Him for how great He is and how amazing He is as our Lord who sent His Son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross that we might be forgiven. When's the last time that you got to do that with other people? people. Now, obviously, we've not been able to gather together in person for quite some time until this past weekend. And, uh, you know, and, and even this past weekend, I know we had some technical difficulties, so you didn't get to watch that was not. We apologize. That was not our intent. We tried. Uh, but, uh, you know, even, even just in the thought of just how important it is and, and why we so desperately want to be together, and I'm sure for many of you that can't maybe be with us right now, you really want to be. It's not because you don't want to be, uh, but because maybe you need to be or whatever, and that's perfectly fine, that we desire to be together. And part of this desire for us to be the family of God is that we wouldn't just see one another, but that we would seek God together. Something special happens when we seek God together. And when we pray together for things like His glory, 
the salvation of the lost, that we can pray for each other, that we would pray that God would use us, that He would work in us, that we could do things like pray for our country, pray for this world, pray for peace, pray for all the things that are going on and what God may be laying on your heart to guide you in those things, to guide me in those things. How about on a Father's Day that we would pray that that Christian men would follow the Lord, that they would take the stands that they need to in life to lead their families, to love others well, to be Jesus in this world, to seek the Lord, to rely on Him, to lead as we're called to lead. I got to tell you this week, I was humbled by praying with some of the guys that I meet with for Bible study on Tuesday nights. And uh, I can't give you details, and I don't want to. Um, but one of one of our guys is going through something. And in the midst of just him needing to share out loud some of the things he was going with, I, I know, and I think the other guys would agree with this, I was humbled by his willingness to lay out actual serious things going on in his life that, that most men would, would, the pride would completely keep them from ever sharing some of those things. And then together, collectively, we prayed together for him and for each other. I mean, something amazing happens in our lives when we, when we seek the Lord together, when we pray to God together. Something special happens when we pray together, not just uh, hearing us, but it's good for the people of God to do this together, that we all together are encouraged together in seeking the Lord together. So just like Jesus prayed and did so for the benefit of others. You know, for us to remember that our time in prayer uh, as a church, and, and when I say as a church, that may mean in a Sunday morning gathering, but it also may mean in the two or more gathered together in His name somewhere else during the week. And that may even be on the phone. That may even be at a breakfast or at a lunch that you just catch up with somebody, you know. And, and, and how many of us have those opportunities in front of us where we're meeting with people who love Jesus, uh, where we are, maybe we don't even know if they love Jesus, but we just go, hey, you know, before we eat this breakfast or before we leave this breakfast or this lunch, you know, is there something I can pray for you about real quick? And I'd just like to pray for us if that's okay. I know that's putting some stuff on the line in certain situations, but maybe the Lord might lead you to do that. And how encouraging and how good for the hearts of those people that you care about that you're having lunch with that day or whatever. How, how God may use that, you may never know. Um, I think for us to be reminded today on a Father's Day that no matter where we are coming from, whether we had a good father here on earth or not, that we have a heavenly Father that we can seek at all times, and He loves us and He cares for us better than even any earthly father can do. And he, he loves us in such a way that He's always there for us, always hears us. And in the process of spending that time with Him, something magical happens that comes through the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Father, the work of the blood of Jesus on the cross, all of those things happening together that allow us to have this relationship with Him that in that time He changes us. He humbles us. He does something in our hearts that we so desperately need. Today, why don't we, why don't we seek the Lord together? Why don't we seek the Father on this Father's Day? Let's do that right now. God, I thank you so much for an opportunity, Lord, just to seek you right now. I, I pray for our church. God, I pray for the body of believers that is 24. God, I pray that we would follow you, that we would look for guidance from you, that we would, that we would rely on you in all things. God, that is so hard for us because, or we just without even realizing it, just take over and go on about our work week and all those things. Lord, help us to see uh, when we're leaving you behind and, and wake us up a little bit or whatever it takes. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would use us to encourage others that you have put into our lives. God, as we, as we pray together, as we love on one another, as we try to be there for one another, continuing to be the church uh, as we gather and as we're scattered and all those things. Lord, just work and do only what you can do uh, as the Prince of Peace and the Lord of all. 
Uh, God, thank you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus uh, to give his life in place of ours. Uh, God, I pray that if any one person is listening to this right now and, and they long for this relationship to be in uh, your family and the family of God and, and to seek that forgiveness and to find that peace that only comes uh, from Jesus and from what you've done through him, God, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to their heart today. God, I pray that today they would believe. I pray that you would help them to believe. I pray that you would work in their heart. God, do something special right now. The Lord's not from me and not from anything else, but it's from you. God, we love you and we thank you for all the things you've done for us. God, continue to work through us, change us, mold us, humble us as we do seek you. Help us to seek you. Help us to be reminded to seek you. And God, I do lift up today those dads out there. Uh, help us to be good dads uh, while we're here, the kind of dads that honor and glorify you. Uh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for all those men that do uh, hold, hold that title and do it so well. God, may, may we look to them and may, may we be challenged uh, in, in just following you and their example. Uh, God, we love you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. We ask all of this in your son's name. Amen. So we've been talking this morning about fathers. It is Father's Day and about prayer and how we need to spend time with our father. Uh, and I just want to encourage you to ask this question right now. What is God saying to my heart? In light of this message, in light of what I've been singing, is the Holy Spirit telling me anything? Do I need to do anything? Do I need to make a decision today? And just to kind of think about that for a second. What might God be leading me to do? We, we try to take time every single week to reflect and respond to what we've been hearing about and singing about. I also want to ask you this question. If, if maybe you're newer to church or you've been around for a little while, I want to ask you, has there ever been that time in your life where you know that you've become a follower of Jesus? You've, you've moved from exploring and thinking about it to, now I believe and I need him in my life. Because if there's never been that moment, you can actually make that decision to follow Jesus today for the very first time. It says in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. The Bible describes it actually like moving from death to life. And so I just want to ask you this morning, do you need to make a decision like that to follow Christ for the very first time? If you do, I want to encourage you just in your own words, right in your home, to cry out to God and to say, Jesus, will you forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior? And if you pray a prayer like that sincerely, God will come into your life immediately and it will be amazing and you will pass from death to life. So if you need to make that decision, I want to encourage you to do it. I also just want to say, there's no pressure from us. We would love for you to make that decision, but we don't want to twist your arm. And so if you've still got questions about what that means, or maybe you just want to dialogue with somebody and say, man, I don't, I don't know. We would love to chat with you and talk with you about that. You can go to our website, and there's a chat icon in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen. You can click on that and you can actually chat with a pastor about what it means to follow Jesus. Or you could ask any other burning question you might have. And so I just want to encourage you to respond how the Holy Spirit's leading you right now, both believers and not yet believers. Let's respond and do whatever God might be asking us to do. I, I want to pray for us in light of that. So let's pray together. Father, you're always doing uh, a million things at once, and we might be aware of like one or two of them. And so right now, as we've been hearing your word preached, and, and we've been spending time specifically together with you, Lord, we trust that you're moving and that you're changing and that you're drawing us close. And so I just want to ask, whatever it is that you're involved with, Lord, I, I just want to pray that you would do that to the utmost. Lord, if there's anybody listening, watching today, and they don't yet know you as their Lord and Savior, I want to pray that you would break into their life and reveal yourself and help them to know that you're a good, good father. Lord, if there are people that need to repent of sin today and follow you more intently, I pray that you would work on their hearts. Lord, whatever it is, whatever decisions we need to make today as a, as a people that are gathering with you, Lord, would you move in power and help us to make those decisions. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
There is a name who reigns without contention, whose power can't be questioned or contained with humble fame. He rules the earth and heavens, his glory knows no measure or refrain. And it's bursting past the borderlines of space. Jesus, enthroned upon the praises of our heart. Jesus, you're the king and you're the center of it all. There is a name, and he's reaching past the margins, calling sons and daughters back to him. As he sings, you can hear the roar of heaven, his prodigals are coming again. Oh, the triumph of of it all yeah. For every eye will see Every heart will know There is no Could not hold him down No grave could keep him bound All sin and sickness bow To the name of Jesus oh, Your name is Jesus Throned upon the praises of our hearts. Jesus, you're the king and you're the center of it all. There's a name who reigns without contention. Whose power can't be questioned or contained With humble faith oh, He rules the earth and heavens His glory knows no measure or refrain And it's bursting past the borderlines of space All right, guys, before we jet out of here today, I just want to make you aware of a couple announcements. Again, the big one is that we are now meeting every week until this building's done. We're meeting at Pleasant View Christian School, which is just 
like a few blocks away from, from our building. And they have been so gracious to allow us to meet in their facility. And we're meeting there in a safe, social distancing way. We have two services at 9 a.m. and at 10.30 a.m. And we need you to sign up. Every single week, we're gonna have a sign up where you sign up for your service. And we're doing that so that services don't get overcrowded and that they're kind of equal in the amount of people that's showing up. Because we're trying to do everything we can to be safe. And so we want you to be aware that that's how we're gathering but we're also going to continue to put out uh, this recording at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning so that if, you're, if you don't yet feel comfortable gathering in person, you can also watch online. And, and we kind of have a all things to all people mindset with this. We want you to do what you truly feel comfortable with. So gather with us in whatever way makes you feel comfortable. And that's going to continue for the next several months until we're back in this building. Uh, the one exception is that on July 5th, that weekend, we actually can't be in the school uh, because of some work that they're doing. And so on that Sunday, we'll have an online only service uh, the same way that we have for the last several weeks. But uh, other than that, we'll be at the school every single week. So be aware of that. Micro churches and Bible studies, those happen every single week, and a lot of them are beginning to happen in person again. Some may still be meeting via Zoom, but we really want you to plug into community. And so if you need that, if you need some extra community, if you would like to get to know some individuals at this church, we want to encourage you to go to our website, click on the button that says micro churches, and you can read all about both our micro churches and our Bible studies and plug in. There's contact information when you go there for contacting those leaders and, and taking the next step towards plugging in to community. So please be aware of that. And then thirdly, we have uh, discussion questions that go along with the sermon every single week that are also on our website. So if you'd like to dive in, think more about what you heard preached about this morning, please check those discussion questions out and, and dig in. Uh, they're there for you to use them. Uh, and then fourthly, one other thing I should say is that there's a kids lesson that we're still putting up every single week on our website. And you can go, if you have little ones, they can go watch about a 10 minute lesson about Jesus. And we're walking through all the miracles that Jesus did right now. And they can learn about God that way. And so I want to encourage you to take advantage of all those resources and ways to connect. Uh, that's pretty much what's going on in the life of our church right this second. Uh, I do have a benediction, and so I want to read that to you right now. And this benediction, I feel like, is especially uh, pertinent because we're kind of gathering in a couple different ways, and yet we're still one body together. So let's, let's listen to this benediction together. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Let's remember that together, family. Peace be with you. We'll see you next week. Bye.